It was a promise central to National's health reforms. They would cut backroom costs and spend the savings on hips and knees. But in the last few weeks, leaks from district health boards tell a different story. Health Benefits Limited, the Crown organisation created to cut costs by bulk buying everything from surgical gloves to insurance, has been compared to a Ponzi scheme. There are allegations of budget blowouts, ghost savings and a climate of fear stopping staff from speaking out. In his first interview on the subject, Health Minister Tony Ryle joins me from the National Party Conference in Wellington. Good morning, Minister. Yeah, good morning, Lisa. The, the district financial officers from these district health boards say that they have lost the severely diminished confidence in, in Health Benefits Limited. Do you think they're right to have those concerns? Well, those were concerns that were expressed uh, several months ago, and they've been taken very seriously by Health Benefits Limited and the district health boards. And the chief financial officers and the CEOs are now much more involved in the process and, in fact, driving the implementation of key parts. The important work that they are doing is making sure that we can harness the uh, power of bulk purchasing and standardisation to free up cash that can be reinvested in frontline services. It's very important work, and it's great that there involved. Well, Health Benefits Limited itself has actually admitted that it hasn't been as transparent as it should be during this process. And I also understand that PricewaterhouseCooper and Ernest & Young are, are revising the project. So isn't that in itself an admission that all is not well? Well, look, it's a pretty difficult area to be working in. If you've got to recall where, where we've come from, six or seven years ago, you had 20 DHBs who were doing their own procurement and purchasing. And, and separately, it's rather inefficient. So we're trying to move to a new environment where there's much more collaboration. And it does mean people have to change the way they do things. Uh, we're wanting to make sure that that's done in a very stepwise and sensible way. The CFOs expressed some concerns about the levelling of engagement with them. They're now much more involved and we're continuing on the path to make sure we can get those savings to free up cash to put back into frontline services. So far, so DHBs and HB... That, so are you satisfied all is well? Oh, look, I think we're heading in the right direction. It's a pretty crunchy thing. It's pretty big what they're trying to do. And uh, there's always going to be people in a system that we've got who are going to express some concern about it. But I think we are heading in the right direction. Already HBL and the DHBs have saved over $250 million together through a number of their initiatives. That all goes back into frontline services. Yeah. Minister, so we're just I going to continue to that momentum. Those, those numbers. You've raised those numbers. So let's take a look at them. By its own projections, health benefits Limited says it's going to save $764 million by 2015-2016. You mentioned the $213 million that's already been saved. That leaves $500 million to save in about 18 to 20 months. I mean, how's that going to happen? Oh, look, those savings might happen in another year or so after that timeline. Uh, as you know... Uh, so they're the behind schedule already? Oh, well, I think it's going to take a little bit longer, and it's for very good reason. We want to make sure that the implementation is right. And if it means that we have to uh, take a little bit extra time to do it, then I think that's better. We want to make sure that the investments come in. If this is an argument about whether it's going to be $700 million in two, two years' time or three years' time but or four years' time... But doesn't that worry you as Minister that it's to make already sure behind savings. schedule? Doesn't that worry you uh, as Minister? Well, key parts of the program are running uh, on time and they are delivering the results that we want. Uh, but this is quite a complex change. It involves 20 district health boards. There's a lot of people involved. And I think there is benefit in slowing things down in some areas to make sure that we get the savings that people want. And, and that's important. If there's one thing I've learned in 24 years in politics is implementation is vital. And that's why we want to make sure that so much effort is going into ensuring that when these things are rolled out, uh, they are rolled out well and we get the savings that people are looking for. Let's look, at the, cost make, of, let's look the, at the cost of that implementation, Minister. Uh, in a yep. letter from a senior DHB manager, a memo, um, it's cited that the costs have ballooned from $87 million to $130 million and that the savings have dropped by about a third of the projections. Is that right? 
Oh, look, that, that's a very political letter that's unsigned, undated. Is that right, though, Minister? And it's been Are those circulated. figures right? No, look, you, you, you've been provided information which actually says that finance procurement supply chain programme is currently running under budget. But if the DHBs uh, want to invest some more money in the future to maximise and optimise the benefits, then that's a decision that they would make. I don't think you can rely on what's been put out in that memo. So you're released, confident that released, this project is on released, budget? Released 12 weeks before the election. So you're with a confident, lot of Minister, that language. this project is on budget? Just to be clear, you are confident that it is on budget? Oh, the information that I've received is it's operating within budget, but to uh, but they will DHBs will have to make a decision about maximising and optimising the benefits that they may want to put some more money in. So instead of being maybe 90 so million, so you are going to ask, up being, you are going to ask for might, more not, money, let me, let Minister. Me just, me no, just, I just want to be clear on this, Minister. Health yeah. Benefits Limited has told us that it is yeah. potentially going to be asked DHBs to contribute more. So are they going to be asked for more, and how much more? Oh, that's up to the DHBs to decide whether they want to invest or not. This is, this is a programme where the current budget is about $90 million to generate savings of about four to $500 million. If it ends up being maybe $100 million to generate those four or $500 million, look, I think it's worth the DHBs considering the investment. So you can't it's a very guarantee big that this that project is not going to blow out. You're talking about figures of oh, look, $100 million uh, it might cost. So you can't guarantee that it's not going to blow out. This is a big project. I don't think you're going to see a blowout on the proportions that this leaked uh, political note that has been getting some media coverage is about. The DHBs will, uh, will make a call on whether there are sufficient benefits to make an additional investment in this project. So what but are the, if this what is an, are the if this is an argument costings? about spending it $90 to million to make $500 million or $100 million to make $500 million, I think you're missing the point. The point here is that we want to get the 20 DHBs working in a more efficient way in how they buy goods and services so that they can get the power of bulk purchasing. Okay, Already well, working let's together, look. Minister, Lisa, let's working look together, at some they of the have savings. saved about $5 million on banking. They've saved $6 or $7 million on insurance. And so this makes a lot of sense. Let me give you this example. No, no, let's, let's uh, Minister, I want to talk to you about those savings because I've looked at two Auditor General reports, a statement of intent from the company itself, and actually a, a, a um, report to the Select Committee, all of those identify the fact that HBL is taking credit for savings that are made from the health boards or that were already in train. Um, so how much of these savings can actually be attributed to Health Benefits Limited and its efforts? Well, how much is its efforts? Oh, well, look, these, that's actually a collective effort. What I'm trying to encourage in district health boards is a more collaborative effort. So if there is a smart procurement option being used in one or two district health so boards, hang on, those, then it should be rolled across the rest of the country. Those figures that you were just quoting to me, Minister, that's right. then and, and they as are not just HBL's efforts. That's everybody's oh, no, they're every, efforts. They're, look, they're everybody's efforts. That's right. And that's why I'm trying to encourage this collective approach. But isn't that the point? Can the, you single out it, how much Health Benefits Limited how much benefit it has brought to the table, how much uh, has it made in savings alone, so that we can assess the value of their efforts properly. Well, the fact is that HBL doesn't spend a lot of money buying goods and services. All the savings come back to DHBs, and DHBs also work collectively with HBL on other initiatives. So the figures that are used are the collective effort, where everybody is wanting to use the powers of bulk, power, uh, bulk purchasing and standardisation to deliver benefits for patients. So I don't think there's much to be gained by saying who's generated what. The fact is that the savings should be made so that the services can go into more hips and knees and other other elective procedures for New Zealanders. It's a very sensible strategy that even our critics acknowledge makes a lot of sense to use that bulk purchasing to get the gains that DHBs need. You talk need. about your I've critics there, this... Minister. You talk about your critics there. Is there a climate of fear around this project? Because we're hearing from people that they've been told to keep quiet. Is, is that what you're seeing, a climate of fear? People unable to speak out about what they feel is wrong? <laughs> 
I don't think anything could be further from the truth. You've seen the memo from the chief financial officers and comments by other people. Uh, the fact is that we're 12 weeks out from a general election. Uh, our opponents want so to take every saying, opportunity Minister, to cause trouble for the government. So what are you saying, that this is politicking, that they're making this up, that it's a figment of their imagination? I, I can certainly say that when uh, unsigned and undated memos are going around with words like Ponzi scheme in it, 12 weeks before an election, that is a political response. My challenge as Minister of Health is to make sure I work with what was a very inefficient system that we inherited to make sure that DHB's HBL work together to generate savings. You know, we inherited a situation, just as one example, where the 20 district health boards bought uh, non-sterile surgical gloves from 18 suppliers, but there are only two manufacturers in the world. So there are real opportunities there to have smart procurement, and HBL works cleverly and, and hard with the DHBs, DHBs, who work very smartly as well, and they are all working to get these procurement gains so that we can deliver that extra money back into frontline services for all patients. Right. Thank you so this much for joining us this morning. This is a time of change, morning. and you're going to see some criticism, but I think New Zealanders are seeing the benefits and will continue to see them. Thanks for joining us this morning. That's the Health Minister, Tony Ryle.